So we want to walk you through the steps now of mixing up the epoxy primer. This is our EPE 300 water-based epoxy primer and we make it in black um, so that way when you put down your primer it has a really nice uh, base for amplifying the metallic pigments. It also comes in uh, white but we're going to go ahead and mix up a batch of our black water-based epoxy primer. So this is a four to one mix. Um, it's a 1.25 gallon kit, so you have one gallon of part A, and then you have a quart of your uh, hardener. So it's a one gallon plus the uh, quarter gallon, so that's how we come to our 1.25 gallon kit. And this kit covers between four and 500 um, square feet of uh, flooring space. So we'll go ahead and we'll take off our lids. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pour the one gallon of A into our mixing container. We'll go ahead and try to get all of it out. And then we'll go ahead and we'll also dump our uh, quart of uh, the B hardener in there as well. And you'll see it's kind of like a honey uh, color and we'll go ahead and just let this drain out for a few seconds since this is our hardener we want to try to get as much of it into the bucket as we possibly can all right so that's pretty good and then we'll take our drill and mixing paddle and we're going to go ahead and mix this up for um, about two to three minutes. We'll do it just at a moderate speed. There's no need to whip this fast um, so it splashes around. Mix it on a moderate speed for about two minutes or so. We're mixing just uh, a 1.25 gallon batch of this right now, but because the water-based epoxy has such a long working time, you could go ahead and mix uh, more than one kit at a time. You could mix two in a five gallon pail. All right, so we've just combined the A and the B part of our uh, primer kit in this bucket. So right now we have a 1.25 gallon kit, but we're now going to add a half a gallon of cold water uh, to this mix. And that does a couple of things. Um, one, it gives you more product. Uh, now you have 1.75 gallons of product, 
but the water also helps to suck the primer down into the concrete to give it a better bond to the concrete. So it's uh, half a gallon of cold water to each 1.25 gallon kit. And now that we've added it to our mixing bucket, we're going to go ahead and mix all three components now, the A, the B, and the water for uh, about another two minutes. And again, we're doing this at just a, a moderate speed, a slow speed. It mixes up very easily. Now you might find, depending on the time of the year that your product has been delivered to you, um, that you might have some of the product settling, in particular the A part, with the pigment uh, at the bottom. So it's not uncommon for you to see um, some thick pigment at the bottom and all you need to do is take a paint stir stick or something and just kind of scrape that out and make sure that it gets into the uh, mixing container. So you can see we're just mixing this at a very moderate speed. Nothing splashing out of the container. We're keeping our workspace very neat. We're not getting any product on us or on the floor. And this looks to be just about right. So we'll go ahead now and we'll uh, start getting ready to actually put it on the floor. So we just mixed up our 1.25 gallon kit of our water-based epoxy primer. Now remember, because we added a half a gallon of cold water to that, we actually have just under two gallons of material um, that we have in our, in our bucket. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and put that down now on this floor, and it's actually a very simple uh, process to do this. There's a few different ways that you can do it if you choose. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate what I feel is the easiest way. Uh, some people will want to pour this out on the floor and then take a squeegee like a magic trowel and squeegee it around the floor and then back roll it wearing spike shoes. I just don't feel like that's necessary unless you want to do it that way. Uh, this is the way uh, that we like to do it here. Very simply, we just take some out of our bucket and we just pour a ribbon. And as you can see, this uh, primer, it's very liquidy very watery. Um, it's a water-based epoxy primer and then we added a half a gallon of water to that as well to extend it so um, it's really very watery. Um, but we're going to start off by just saturating our roller, our edge roller, and we're going to run the edges real quick. But as you can see, by doing it this way, there's really no need to have to walk in the product. It's just a bit cleaner, neater way. It doesn't dirty up a, a squeegee either. And in the end, we're going to accomplish the exact same thing. So we've got our tape up on the baseboard to protect it. And so that's the edges. And now we'll go ahead and we'll take an 18 inch roller. Same idea, so we're gonna go ahead and saturate it at first. And of course, as with all of our products, when you first start using the roller cover, it soaks up a lot of the material. But then it's just as simple as rolling it into place. And I'm going to go ahead and pour just a little bit more material down because, like I said, right here at the beginning, the, um, the roller cover soaked up a lot. So we'll go ahead and pour that out. Now what we're looking for is a nice, even coat between four and 500 square feet per kit, not per gallon, but per kit. So in this case, again, 
this 1.25 gallon kit has actually yielded um, 1.75 gallons of material. So that material will cover between four and five hundred square feet. And you can see there's really no wrong way to do this. We're just trying to cover the space with the material. We don't want to leave any puddles. We can back roll over it a couple of times, but there's no need to walk out in this material. So there is a range in coverage of four to 500 square feet because you might have concrete that's extremely porous and it's going to soak up more material than another floor would. So there is a range, but we're looking for a thin, even coat. And this is basically just like painting your floor. Except in this case, we're using a water-based epoxy primer. Now we're putting it on so thin that we can actually see the um, pattern, the scratch pattern from our diamonds that we use to prepare the concrete. And that's totally fine if that happens. But what we don't want to see is any of the concrete still showing through anywhere. We want to make sure that that's totally sealed up because if it's not, it could cause some outgassing and it could lead to uh, some bubbles in the concrete. So we'll go ahead and do some of our edges again. And again, we're using 3 8 nap uh, roller covers to do this. And one other thing that I've learned from experience is that um, it's, it's much easier to put down material than it is to try to take up material if you put down too much. So put down just a little bit. And if you find that you need more, well, then we can easily go ahead and pour some more. But we don't want to dump out a massive puddle of material and then find we get to the end of the room we have so much excess material on the floor and now we got to figure out some kind of way to get it up because we don't want to leave this primer thick on the floor if it's on too thick we run the risk of it peeling uh, and don't forget this is what our metallic epoxy is going to bond to so we want to make sure that we get that thin coat down and we get it within the recommended uh, coverage rate. So here's a spot that we rolled over right here and the concrete's very porous in that spot there. So it sucked up a lot of the primer and you can see there's it looks like almost uh, like a white uh, spot there that's actually just the concrete showing through. We don't want to leave it like that we want a solid black base. So that means that we need to dip our roller a little bit more and then just go over that spot just like this. It could also be uh, because there's a little dip in the concrete right there that the roller's not getting into. Whatever the case, whatever the reason, we do not want to see uh, white spots like that. So we're going to uh, roll over it. And again, if you're seeing roller marks and things like that on this uh, floor, that's fine. It's just the primer. We're not concerned about that at all. Uh, we're just trying to get primer into concrete. So. Um, we just uh, use our roller to push it down into any spaces that uh, might look a little bit dry or any spaces that the roller has skipped. So here's another little low spot that I'm seeing there on the floor so we'll just go ahead and work that in. 
can roll this in any direction that you want to roll it. It doesn't matter. And again, you do have the option of you want to put on your spike shoe so that you can walk out in it. That's totally fine. You can squeegee it and back roll it, which is fine. You can dip and roll it. Totally fine. Or you can pour out uh, beads of it out onto the floor like we're doing here and roll it that way, which I think is actually the easiest way to do it. Pour some more out on the floor. Very, very easy product to work with. Um, of course, everything involving floor coatings is uh, temperature dependent, but you have about an hour and a half, up to two hours uh, to leave this stuff in the bucket and work with it. So again, you can mix up uh, as much of it as you like. It's a four to one mix. Um, we recommend really just mixing up one kit at a time and that way you don't have any issues with it um, tacking up on you or starting to uh, turn into a gel state in the bucket you have plenty of working time to do it we have people that call us and um, ask us if the priming is actually that important or is it something that they can skip. Um, the technical answer to that question is I guess you could skip it, but the primer serves a purpose. It seals up the concrete so that it uh, drastically reduces the chances of bubbles and it promotes adhesion of your metallic coat. And it also helps your metallic coat to spread easier, better, and farther out on the floor. So we uh, say it's part of the system, and we recommend that you buy the complete entire system. The drying time on this um, primer is uh, typically between two and four hours. Again, it's all temperature, humidity uh, dependent. We've seen it dry in as little as 30 minutes. And sometimes if your concrete's cold or the temperature's a little bit cold outside of the range that we recommend, uh, we've seen it take five and six hours to dry, but your average is between uh, two and four. Um, speaking of temperatures, we recommend installing the primer uh, between 68, 72 degrees is optimum. Uh, obviously, the warmer the, uh, the conditions, the faster that um, this is going to want to dry. And if you're working in cooler environments where your temperatures are, you know, in the mid to lower 60s, uh, it's going to take longer. And don't forget, if your air temperature is 60 degrees, well, chances are the slab that you're working on could be 45 degrees. Um, so you need to take that into account when it comes to uh, drying times, but you do want to try to work within the recommended temperatures because that's just going to eliminate any chances of uh, anything happening that you don't want, such as bubbles or really uh, shortening your, your pot life on the product. So that's basically all there is to rolling out the primer. And now we'll just let this dry and then we'll go ahead and later on today we'll put down our uh, metallic epoxy. So we've allowed the primer to dry for about two hours. Um, it typically takes between two and four hours depending on temperatures. It was uh, in the mid 70s in this uh, space. So it took about two hours for the primer to dry. And now I just want to show you what it is that you're looking for to know that the primer has been installed correctly and that you're ready to install the metallic epoxy on top of it. So as we take a look around the space here, uh, you can see that there's a nice sheen to the floor. However, there's variations in the sheen. If you uh, look um, in certain spots of the floor, you can see that uh, there are parts that are shinier than others and you can actually still see some of the texture of the concrete and that's okay that's uh, exactly what we would expect 
uh, because the concrete surface here has different uh, porosities all over it depending on how um, we ground the concrete and uh, various other factors. But in general, we're looking for 100% coverage of the floor with our primer. We don't want any bare spots at all and uh, we don't have any bare spots on this floor. Uh, you can actually even see uh, some of the uh, scratch marks uh, that are in the concrete from when we were doing our grinding and that's totally fine but we uh, do have primer that's down in every scratch uh, covering every part of the concrete so uh, we're actually real satisfied with this and we'll go ahead now and begin the uh, process of installing the metallic epoxy. Keep in mind that at this point you will have 24 hours to install the metallic epoxy on top of the primer or else you will have to sand the surface to create a proper bond.